Hi guys, it's me Nana. I had a little request and that was to create cards from the stickers I acquire or shall we say collect from Dollar Tree. So challenge request, challenge taken. And as a matter of fact, I had so much fun and I hope that you will too. So let's get started. First of all, I got uh, my old cards and uh, excuse me, my old stickers. And I wanted to show you this one, which I've been holding on forever because I think I paid $4 for it. And it's got to be just right before I spend $4, right? On a card. So these are a few that I've acquired in the last few days. And these florals I acquired, I think at the beginning of the year. And I just can't seem to use all of them but i do whenever i need a card quickly and i can't tell you how much i love dollar tree um uh, stickers and i i stopped at the jolie because again that was another four or five dollar um uh, expense and i very carefully spend those and these are the newest ones that i got and they're the ones we're going to concentrate on today uh, because they look made to create cards, don't they? They just, they look perfect. So this is just a quick shot at the ones that I have. I'm going to be making children's cards later. And here we have uh, a few things that are good to have if you're going to be making cards. Uh, I'll explain them in a specific video if there's any interest. But for now, I'm going to concentrate on the Dollar Tree stamps. I have tons of stamps that I've gotten. I've paid from a dollar to uh, $15, right? Now this is a scoreboard. Uh, the white one is a Martha Stewart. This is a Crafter's Companion. Now I'm showing you the Crafter's Companion because unfortunately Martha Stewart is no longer making hers. And this is an $11 uh, sliding uh, blade Cricut paper cutter. This is a We Are Memory Keepers uh, combination uh, scoreboard and paper cutter. And this is a small uh, guillotine, which I don't like to use unless I have to. Okay, and here are some adhesives that I got at Dollar Tree. And surprisingly, they're very, very good, especially that liquid adhesive. Now I do use my tape runner and this is my pokey tool, which is a lot of fun. And here are the sentiments that I got at Dollar Tree as well as sentiments from Tim Holtz, which I think I paid $1.98 for. It's wonderful. There's several hundred sentiments, very, you know, one word, two word, three word sentiments, which really are succinct straight to the point and I just love them. You see, wishing, exploring. I mean, there's a lot of things you can use those for, but I thought I'd let you know about those because they're $1.98, a great deal. Oh, here we are with our birthday. Uh, these are the ones I'll probably be using the next time I make some cards for you, but I really had fun. Now, this is their uh, foil paper, which I have to tell you uh, is not very good quality, but in a rush, it's not bad to have. Now I cut pre-cut some paper, regular eight and a half by 11 paper into, I cut them in half lengthwise as well as vertically. And then I here I'm showing you some cards that you can buy pre-scored, pre-cut. But for the most part, what I do is I cut my uh, toppers and my base. The base is actually the colored cards and the toppers are just uh, like they sound, the top of the card that we're going to place onto the colored paper. More will be clear as we go along. So I have one ready to go. You have to have a bone folder. If you don't, then you can also use a pencil, anything that will make that uh, fold crisp. So here we are, we're gonna start on our first card. And I wanted to find flowers that would match the general color scheme of that grouping, which is more orange and yellow. But you know, you can contrast sometimes. You don't necessarily have to go with the flow. You can always go backwards. Now, I couldn't find what I really wanted, so I switched to the green. And because I'm a little nervous, to be honest with you, I've never really made this kind of card for you. 
But again, I wanted to use the Dollar Tree stamps. I wanted to show you that with just one small set of stamps, regardless of how much you paid for them, you can create many things. Now this is um, a topper for my card. In other words, I'm going to put it on top of the base. And oh, here, you can't do uh, cards without uh, baby wipes. <laughs> so I'm using baby wipes to clean off the ink and I'm going to be changing colors for my topper. I'm basically creating a background for the card. Now I'm not good at this. I'm very, very new. And as we go along, you'll see that I make many mistakes, but it's not about perfection. It's about getting in there and just doing it. I have some Distress Oxide inks from Tim Holtz and I really enjoy using them because you can use them for more than just card making and they stamp very well. You don't have to worry about, you know, re-stamping. And if it doesn't come out perfect, it's okay because especially for these, we're going to be cutting it anyway. Now here's my second topper. This is the one I'm telling you, I'm not really clear on where I'm going with it. And I ended up going all over the place, but it's okay because as I said, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. And if it's not perfect, at least I got the practice and I'll be able to use it in one form or another. But the practice that came along with this one was in the coloring. So here's my third topper. Again, it's just a way to show you what these Distress Oxide inks can do. This is just a regular stamp pad, but it's a, they call it a hybrid ink because you can uh, use it as a dye or you can use it as a pigment. And uh, so either way, it's very good for blending. And that's what I'm attempting to do. Again, not very good just learning. So I'm trying to make as many uh, shades of different colors on this topper so that I can play with it and show you what this uh, Distress Oxide does. Basically, it reacts to water, which is so much fun. So I'm stamping it with the Dollar Tree stamp and I'm putting it in water. Okay, so now I'm going back to one of the first ones I made and I'm putting it on the silver foil and I'm basically putting some ink along the edge to give it some depth. I'm uh, trying to create interest, trying to, trying to make depth and uh, the silver foil, although it was just a dollar, it doesn't, um, it's not very, uh, stiff so you kind of have to work with it okay now i was going to just go ahead and put this flower on there and then i realized it would just be too busy and get lost so i changed uh toppers and went back to my water uh dye and i found that that worked much better and i'm just putting the stickers on i rounded the corners and then i uh put some of the teeny tiny stickers on there and I used the, uh, the uh, adhesive that has foam on it so they're elevated and uh, the butterfly stands up off the paper a little bit. And as you can see, I'm kind of uh, tackling the silver foil and getting it to be the right size, but it keeps wanting to curl on itself. So there are other foil papers you can buy that are much better, but for the purposes of using Dollar Tree papers, you know, you make the best of it and you know what? It came out okay. And I'm just kind of putting it on there with the bone folder, trying to make sure it stays straight. But I tell you what guys, isn't that cute? cute 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 and i made it for less than uh way less than i would had i bought or used uh, the regular stickers that you buy at the craft stores so i'm very pleased with the way it ended and i hope that you like it as well so all dollar tree with the exception of the uh, base okay now we have a blue base and i'm cut this is going to be a top uh, opening card. So I scored it at the five and a half inch uh, uh, 
you know, five and a half inches so that it would be equal on both sides. And I'm trying to uh, use this uh, stamped image that I made, but I'm not happy with it. So just to make it, uh, you know, usable, not waste it, I went ahead and put a topper on top of the topper, which is done a lot. And it just gives it again, more dimension. I cut rounded the corners, uh, made the silver just a little bit smaller and decided that I would also always, always uh, dye ink the, um, the edges. It just makes it look more finished. And then I found that huge uh, focal point, which is that big sticker with all the flowers in a bucket. I just love that. Or is that a flower bucket? It was just water, a watering can. There you go. That's a watering can, right? <gasps> but it's beautiful and I cut these to create a vertical uh, use instead of horizontal. And, or is that horizontal? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, she doesn't know what she's talking about, guys. She's just having a lot of fun. And I really loved the, the way number two card came out. Again, just simple, to the point, and again, all Dollar Tree with the exception of the base. Now, oh yeah, I remembered that these are like brads, those little stickers that we got at Dollar Tree. And there you have it. I even enhanced it a little bit more. More pleased, pleased as punch. Okay, now we're gonna do another top. And there you see I'm doing a five and a half inch score so that we can do another top opening card. I'm looking for what I think will match and I pulled out some paper that I have. Now it's a foiled paper that I'm gonna use as a topper and it's very beautiful. I thought it would go very well, but because it's a very busy uh, paper, I decided that it would be better to keep it as simple as possible. So we're going with just a couple of the stickers. One, uh, of course, would be the focal point, and the other would be our lovely um, hummingbird. So I'm just quickly putting on the topper, and that adhesive is very, very good. I didn't realize how good it was until I used it this time, and I have to say, it's right up there with the more expensive uh, liquid adhesive, so I would recommend that highly. So anyway, there's our lovely hummingbirds and I'm just trying to determine which one will go with the paper and the sentiment. And I have to tell you that it's always a good idea to try to stay away from being centered or symmetrical. Uh, there's always a lot more interest when you put your focal point a little off center, as you see we're gonna do here. So we're putting it in the bottom third, and then we'll also put the uh, inside sentiment in the bottom third, and it just looks a lot more interesting. Okay. Here's my problem child, and that is the uh, topper that I created with the stamps. I really wasn't very happy with it, so I'm just kind of fidgeting with it, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, um, cutting it to match the uh, blue topper that we're gonna put on the base. And I'm going through all the motions, but all the while thinking about what I'm gonna do. So what I ended up getting was some um, markers, and my markers are water-based. Uh, but before I go there, let me uh, explain these uh, foam sheets. 32, I think, for a dollar from uh, Dollar Tree versus using the uh, adhesive tape that has foam. And it's a 3M foam, it's very expensive. But when you use the Dollar Tree foam sheets, you get a better uh, uh, elevation, it's more stable and you save a ton of money. So if you see these little foam sheets, oh, do go ahead and get them because they save you a ton of, of money for making these cards. Okay, so I got my water-based markers and a water brush. So I have the water-based markers and I'm actually uh, putting the ink onto the uh, block. So you put the ink on the block and then you pick it up with your water brush. And basically you get a, um, a look of a water colored uh, back, back, background. Yeah, background. <laughs> so you get a water colored background and all you did was use the ink from a marker by scribbling, you see me scribbling it on there and picking it up with the marker. 
Also, you can do the very same thing with the ink in um, the pad. You can take most ink pads, squash it down on the acrylic block, pick it up with the water brush, and again, you get that watercolor look. So I was very pleased with what finally happened. That's why it's important sometimes to just step away, fidget a little, and, uh, and before you know it, you end up with something that uh, surprises and amazes you. For me, I was surprised and amazed that I didn't muck it up that much. <laughs> but as you can see, the end product will be almost as if I got my um, watercolors out. So I was very happy with that. And I decided to use the owls, again from the Dollar Tree, as my toppers, my focal point. And uh, that was pretty much it, guys. That's number four. It was the same concept. This one is a side uh, opening card. I got the sentiment from the original, um, from the original uh, packet of stickers that I was going to use before because the uh, owls don't have a sentiment. But again, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And Ma Sue, this is for you. You were the one who requested uh, cards from the stickers. And I promise next time we'll do the ones for the children. I can't do both of them because it's going to be an extra long uh, video if I did. So I hope you enjoy these. I hope you take on the challenge. I hope that somehow, some way, uh, you learned something from my very awkward presentation, but I am new as well. And I hope that I get better as we go along and maybe we can get better together. Until next time, again, bring that color because it's there. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.